Hi, I'm Alicia, and this is NASA Now for December 21st, 2011. There is much more to space than an empty, lifeless void. And today, we're going to take a look at cosmic dust and learn how microscopic particles floating in space could hold the key to the origins of the universe. That's ahead, but first, here's what's happening at NASA Now. Who says life doesn't imitate art? In September, NASA's Kepler Space Telescope made an amazing discovery in our galaxy in the star constellation Cygnus, about 200 light years away from Earth. Kepler Space Telescope detected what's called a circumbinary planet. Unlike our planet, which orbits the Sun, a circumbinary planet orbits two suns. This means if you were on the surface of this planet, now known as Kepler-16b, you could see double sunrises and double sunsets, like the planet Tatooine from the movie Star Wars. At one time, cosmic dust was an obstacle for astronomers, but today, that same dust takes on new meaning in relation to the evolution of our universe. To help us understand how some of the smallest elements in space could have their origins from the biggest explosion of all time is Dr. Varujan Gorgian of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Hello, Dr. Gorgian. What is cosmic dust? Cosmic dust is really not necessarily that different from dust here on Earth. They're very small particles, and they're a combination of either a lot of atoms of a particular kind or the combination of a lot of molecules that come together and make these very small grains about one one hundredth the size of your hair. And they're usually mostly made up of carbon or silicon, but they also have many of the other elements in the periodic table of elements. Where does the dust come from and how is it created? Dust actually gets created in the death of stars, and there are two different kinds of deaths that we can talk about. In a more massive star, the star collapses and it dies in a massive explosion, and in that explosion, there's a lot of elements that are created in that explosion, and then they're driven off, and then they eventually become parts of interstellar dust. The other way, which is what will happen to our sun, is a much more steady death of the star. It actually gets older, and then it gets puffs up and it dredges up these heavier elements that have been created inside it, mostly carbon and oxygen and some others, and it sort of drives out in its stellar wind and those then combine to make interstellar dust. How can you see cosmic dust? We're mostly used to the world that we see by our eyes, which is optical light. And whenever there's dust between us and something else, you see it blocks the light. And we see a lot of cosmic dust that way because it blocks out the light behind it. But that's not the best way. The best way is to look at the wavelength of light that dust emits. And usually, anything that has any temperature emits light. Dust is actually warm, not hot, but warm enough that it emits a lot of infrared light. So you, if you look at infrared light, you can see dust all over the universe. So obviously, it's here on Earth. Can we see it? Can we touch it? It's very difficult to detect it on the surface of the Earth. Even though so much of it falls down, it's very, very thin and very tiny particles. So it's very hard to tell it apart from other dust or other things that are on the Earth. But if we go high up in the atmosphere, we can actually catch it before it comes and mixes in with the Earth dust. And NASA has done this for many years where they fly planes very high up and they capture the dust uh, by these very, very high flying planes. The other way, of course, to capture it is to send spacecraft in the solar system, which we have, and so they have collected dust from within the solar system. What can we learn by studying the chemical elements of the sun about the building blocks for life? All dust is made up of elements that are created within the stars, and it's very critical to study what's going on within the stars to tell us about what comes out of them. And so by combining that uh, with how solar systems evolve, and then eventually how planets form, and then how people come <laughs> to be on those planets. This is all connected. And so we are, in, in, in essence, stardust. All of the dust that comes from the stars is connected through a, this long chain and is part of what we are. The universe is full of elements, known and unknown. Here's a great way to get a handle on all of the known elements. Teachers, look for the featured lesson, Chemical Elements, Genesis, What Are We Made Of? You'll find it on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and tell us how you like the show. 
We'll see you next time on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.